हेलो लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वेलकम बैक टू एक्सॉटिक एस्ट्रोलॉजी एंड समबडी आस्क्ड मी अ क्वेश्चन रिसेंटली व्हेन डज प्लैनेट्स इन दोस्थानास दे गिव गुड रिजल्ट्स एंड व्हेन व्हेन डू दे गिव बैड रिजल्ट्स ऑलवेज ओके सो दिस इज समथिंग व्हिच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस टू आइडेंटिफाई एज एस्ट्रोलॉजर्स बिकॉज many times we see planets in dustanas and we give a fatalistic judgment uh, okay this is the way it is and that's it your life is destroyed on the other side we see uh, some nice so called good placements and say oh your life will change you will reach the top of the world and then ah uh, sad nothing happens and then after some time the person is like does astrology work so today uh, i have an example chart in front of you to demonstrate this that uh when when planets can appear to be good and when they are actually good and when do they appear bad and they are actually bad but when they can be the other way around also you know, they might be uh, appearing nice but they may be bad or they may be bad appearing superficially but they may be very nice at the end okay so the dusthanas in general we know they they are the ones who give challenges we have uh, the sixth house which is this house and uh, yeah so this is this is the chart of a uh, person uh, a man's chart and um, this person was born on 15th of february 1985 okay i have not revealed the name due to uh, privacy reasons okay so if you look at this chart what do you see in at a first glance okay you will see okay now this person has saturn jupiter mercury in the dusthanas all oh, this is a very difficult chart then you will say oh but uh, mercury is also the lagna lord that makes the situation even worse where is the moon moon is okay uh, well placed apparently not bad what about the sun sun is also decent <coughs> and uh, you see uh, that the lord of the fourth house which is also mercury and the lord of the 10th house which is jupiter and the 7th house also jupiter is also in the dusthana so you can see the lord the this kendra has two lords jupiter and mercury both are in dusthanas okay and the ninth lord saturn which is also the eighth lord is also in the sixth house so that uh, that is apparently terrible something to, uh, which nobody would like to have but you you cannot do astrology uh, in such simplistic terms you have to go to the level of the nakshatra to identify what is actually going on in the chart okay so therefore if you are new to the channel then please uh, subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation from me uh, then please go to my website down below in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you even if you have planets in dusthanas apparently <coughs> okay so then what do you do next you see which planets are placed where okay so that's the first step so now you see you have apparently a difficult position here saturn which is in the 6th house okay but you have to check is saturn really that challenging where is the nakshatra lord sitting which houses does he rule not saturn itself the nakshatra lord of saturn so if you go here then you can check saturn is in anuradha nakshatra okay so which is the nakshatra lord of anuradha it that saturn himself so now this saturn is really difficult because the na- he is the nakshatra lord of anuradha and he himself is placed in adusthana and he is also the eighth lord by the way now the good thing is he is also the ninth lord so therefore uh, this position can give good results provided the ninth house is activated which means when the person does some uh, spiritual practices take shelter of the guru or gets some kind of higher help ninth house shows anything which is above you which is higher than you which you cannot get without 
uh, without that person giving it to you so it's like mercy you you can <coughs> you can't demand you can just uh, you you can just get it from somewhere you know if you are lucky actually that's why it is known as the house of luck but what does the ninth house bestow the ninth house bestows guidance regarding how to come out of problems in life okay and how to obtain a uh, higher spiritual wisdom and all this of course at a higher level so if this person comes and tells you oh my saturn mahadasha will start oh, of course his saturn will start uh, after a very long time but as an example if this person would come and ask you oh saturn mahadasha is starting what should i do then you should tell this person that you have to seek uh, guidance from some guide some senior okay and because it is saturn so the dasha brings the people so it's not necessarily uh somebody who is uh, necessarily very religious or spiritual but it could represent somebody who is very old so these this is how you know when help can come from where okay and saturn also can represent underdeveloped countries okay Uh, so somebody from some underdeveloped country can also help this person then next we go to jupiter now what about jupiter jupiter inherently as the 10th lord in the 8th 7th lord in the 8th not great <laughs> but you have to now go and check what's going on with jupiter where is jupiter he is placed in uttara shada you see uttara shada is ruled by the sun now where is sun placed sun is placed in the 9th house there you see fantastic it is okay and yes of course by the way i forgot to say that um, the place the placements that we are seeing here is from the lagna chart but generally we do not see placements of planets from the lagna chart we see from the bhav chart okay but uh, when i also place the bhav chart um, beside then many people say we get confused so i am just trying to explain this as a principle so don't assume you can go and see the bhav chart it will be there in this pdf in astrosage.com okay so there you will actually see where are the planets literally placed okay but we are assuming here that if saturn is in scorpio it is in the 6th house okay we are just assuming just to understand this principle okay now you see where where is the lord of uttara shada placed uh, yes it's in the 9th house that's a great thing to have so that means this jupiter inherently 10th lord in the 8th uh, not a great placement 7th lord in the 8th very challenging placement for marriage and career both um but uh, this is likely to uh, give give up give this person a lot of success in which areas like teaching and why do i say teaching because sun is not only in the 9th house he is also the lord of the 3rd house you see leo is in the 3rd house okay <coughs> so therefore uh, we have to tell the person that sir uh, there can be some reversals in the beginning because it is in the 8th house but from those rehearsals there will be some sudden rise which you will have and that will happen that is bound that is destined because the nakshatra lord is indicating a trikona okay it has to happen by by any means then what about mercury where is mercury placed you check mercury here mercury is in dhanishtha nakshatra okay and who is the lord of dhanishtha yes dhanishtha is ruled by mars mangal where is mangal placed he is placed in the 10th house name fame power position authority as the lord of the 6th and the 11th so see uh second house sixth house tenth house and eleventh these three houses are connected the sixth tenth and eleventh so this mercury it's like the best planet for career and finances okay it is even better than mars because we will check mars but uh mercury's nakshatra lord who is mars is indicating the sixth house tenth house and the eleventh house therefore there cannot be a planet better than mercury and the 8th house and 11th house if they are linked like in this case uh, then uh, we see that there is a sudden gain like uh, for inheritance or uh, 
lot of money coming in suddenly okay so these things can happen if the eighth house is involved so this is a great placement otherwise you will say oh mercury is in the eighth oh my god your life is ruined it's terrible you have no reason to live there are astrologers who say like this to their clients sometimes i don't know how do they call themselves the astrologers but and there are many clients which i have they come and tell me this astrologer told me you know you have no right to live in this world because you have such a bad placement okay anyways uh, so uh, then we check uh, the apparent so these are the apparently bad planets okay which were seemingly very bad saturn jupiter and mercury so out of them we see saturn is the only one difficult but still there is hope because the ninth house is linked with saturn by planet and nakshatra now what about jupiter mercury both are fantastic mercury being extraordinary okay now let us check the apparently nice planets okay who are the nice planets who are sitting in good houses apparently this ketu is sitting in the uh, sign of venus in the 5th house okay in libra so this apparently is a good house okay and the nak and uh, ketu gives results of dispositors also Uh, so dispositor of ketu which is venus is in the 10th house okay and venus is also the fifth lord uh, fifth lord in the 10th fantastic and um, yeah it seems uh, all now he's also the 12th lord so this can uh, be good for business that you have some expenditure which is the 12th house and then you gain a lot of wealth you know it's like gain after loss or oh, sorry after expenditure which is exactly business but now we go and check uh, what's going on there if you go go and see ketu um ketu's nakshatra lord uh, is uh, jupiter because he is in vishaka nakshatra okay now where is the nakshatra lord sitting uh, he is again the seventh lord eighth lord uh, so, sorry seventh lord and tenth lord which is jupiter is sitting in the eighth house so now both the dusthanas are linked somehow okay venus is linked to the 12th and jupiter is linked to the 8th so there will be lots of challenges this will not be a easy journey so now you see apparently you said oh ketu is excellent it's out of the world which is not wrong wrong in a sense but there will be lot of challenges because the 8th and the 12th houses are linked by planet and nakshatra especially okay and because jupiter venus are also linked with the 10th house which is ultim which who are ultimately linked to ketu so there will be some level of name fame which this person gets but it will be very difficult for him to maintain that you know there will be constant threat from other people who will try to pull him down okay then what about mars mars seems to be an excellent planet 11th lord in the 10th best position for finances but let us go and check at the level of the nakshatra mars is in pisces uttar bhadra pada nakshatra now you see the game begins here who is the lord of uttar bhadra pada it is saturn himself where is saturn he is in the 6th house you see and he's also the 8th house so this is an example of a planet which is in the 10th house as the 11th lord can wreak havoc in your career so what is happening is externally this person is enjoying benefits of 11th lord in the 10th which means uh, like lot of contacts he's making you know from his career and he's becoming famous day by day but what is going on inside he's into depression okay the 6th 8th uh, lord in the 6th and that shows depression okay so you will say oh this mars and eventually he will have fall down from his uh, career because of this depression okay so you will say oh this mangal is digbali it is brilliant out of the world it is excellent blah 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 all the things you will say and then um, everything will be ruined okay now you know why and yeah by the way i forgot to say ketu will also give results of uh, mars because ketu also gives results of planets which aspect ketu okay so mars is aspecting ketu with its eighth aspect so ketu will also give results of mangal but anyway so now you know how this mars will behave initially the person will feel oh i am getting a lot of contacts i am going higher and higher but then very soon he will have downfall 
Now, what about Venus? Venus is again apparently exalted in the 10th house. Let's see. Ah, now you see. What about Venus? Venus has 12th lot in the 10th, 5th lot in the 10th. Um, now you see Venus is in uh, Revati Nakshatra. Who is the lord of Revati? It's Mercury. What about Mercury? He himself is in the 8th house. Again, very difficult. Extremely challenging. Mars Venus has the power to ruin this person. Okay. So uh, now you will say, oh, what the hell is this? You know, Mercury was in the 8th. We thought it was bad. But now you see a planet in the 8th can make you extremely wealthy. And a planet in the 10th can make you like a beggar. Like Mars and Venus will do in his case. Okay. So any other planets remaining? What about Moon? Mm-hmm. Moon is in the seventh house. Uh, it is in Mula Nakshatra. It is in Ketu's Nakshatra. So a bit challenging though. Although Ketu also has good things. Okay. <laughs> now what about the Sun? Sun is in Dhanishta Nakshatra. Mars. Fantastic. Okay. This is out of the world. Sun and Mercury are the most powerful planets for this person. Okay. So extraordinary rise will come during uh, Antardashas because uh, this person will mostly not get Mercury Mahadasha and Sun Mahadasha is alre already passed. So during the Antardashas of Sun and Mercury, the person will have extraordinary rise. Okay. <coughs> Any other planet remaining? Oops, Rahu Maharaj is remaining. Rahu again, like Ketu, uh, it will give results of Mangal. Excellent. Um, 6th Lord, 11th Lord in the 10th. Fantastic. And um, he himself is placed in the 11th house. Okay. So Rahu is excellent. Uh, now the thing is, um, his Rahu Dasha will come, you know, after 2029. So this Mangal Dasha will be very difficult for this person career wise. Okay. And then in Rahu, he will reach the pinnacle Zenith. Okay. So Rahu is the best planet in his chart because he himself is in the 11th house and his Nakshatra Lord is signifying the 6th, 10th and 11th. So there is no other better planet than Rahu. It's even better than Mercury. Okay, Because Mercury, although by Nakshatra he is indicating the 11th house and the 10th house, but he himself is not in a very good dignity. Uh, sorry, not a very good house. Okay. So therefore, Rahu is undoubtedly the best planet in the chart okay, for career and this person is very lucky. So you, when this person comes to you for a consultation, when he asks you, so when will I be at the peak of my life? When will my career shoot up? Then you have to say, yes, sir, uh, you are very lucky that these 18 years you will rise, rise, rise high in life. Okay. And then his Jupiter Mahadasha will start. Jupiter we already saw. Uttarashada. Okay. Sun. Jupiter will also give him rise. And then. Yeah. So by the time Jupiter ends. It's 2063. Okay. Anyways. So this is how you actually determine. Uh, uh, if a planet in a Dustana is actually good or bad. Okay. Not just superficially saying things. Just because it is uh, seen. Okay. That will be all from my side. If you have a planet in Dustana, so do not worry. Check where the Nakshatra Lord is and try to see how the person can get help from uh, different sources. Okay. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him. If you are new, then please subscribe to the channel below. And if you want a consultation, my website is also down below. Okay. Thank you very much.